Welcome to the Classy Thursday edition of the St. Mark's Spark. I'm glad that you all are with us. As we begin this time together, we are going to be reading from Psalm 105 as a means to uh, sell our spirits, to uh, put us into an attitude of learning, an attitude of prayer, an attitude of worship. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and his judgments that he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with our normal reading through the lectionary and our daily lectionary reading today is from John chapter 12. Uh, You might remember from uh, previous readings that we are getting closer and closer to the cross, closer and closer to uh, in the middle of Holy Week to Calvary. And so we had a a while back last week, we talked about the death of Lazarus and and then we talked about on Tuesday the uh, perfume that Mary uh, poured out on Jesus' feet, Mary, the sister of Lazarus. And uh, today we're hearing about Jesus being very honest about what he's feeling. And that question really is, is the honesty that Jesus has and also uh, the invitation, I believe, to be honest with God as well. So now we go to John chapter 12, verses 27 through 36. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, The voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness will not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are nearing the end of John's gospel. We still have a little bit of ways to go, a couple more chapters but this is very near the end of jesus life and the bible's honest about this jesus knows what is ahead of him even if the disciples even if those around him don't fully understand it or don't have no idea whatsoever and so when jesus is talking here it's beautiful uh, and it's honest and honesty is beautiful it's jesus says now my soul is troubled His spirit is disquieted. This reminds us, perhaps, uh, recalls back of the psalmist talking about, why are you disquieted within me, O my soul? Why are you upset within me? Um, And Jesus is saying, my soul, it's heavy. It's weighed down. I know what is about to happen in a couple of days. And then Jesus has this amazing discourse where he says, and what should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? Father, keep me from this harm? Father, 
take away the cross that that I should not die on it. This was a temptation. This was a temptation Jesus faced in the wilderness before he even began his public ministry, where the tempter came and and said to Jesus, says, shows him all the kingdoms of the world, and he says, if you bow down and worship me, I'm going to give you all these things. And that temptation was to have the crown without the cross. Jesus is vocalizing, I think, this temptation right here. Should I pray that God's going to take away this time of trial, take away this hour? And Jesus answers that it's for this very reason I've come to this hour. It's for this very reason I'm saying, no, I'm not going to ask out of it. I've come here, and this is the reason I'm here. We sing the song. We sing it on... Um, we sing it on uh, Sundays uh, at Christmas time and in Advent. Uh, you know, good Christian friends rejoice. You may, might remember it has good Christian men rejoice. But it says Jesus Christ was born for this. He was born for this. He was born to save. And this is the vehicle. This is how God is doing it. It's through the cross. Jesus is going through this internal uh, struggle right here. His soul is tr troubled. And yet he still goes through with it. He's still willing to go through with it. He says, Father, glorify your name. And then we have this beautiful scene, this powerful scene, where the voice from heaven says, I have glorified it, and I'm going to glorify it again. At some level right here, Jesus is submitting to the will of the Father, the will of God. There's another time we were told in Scripture in the Synoptic Gospels we hear it. Uh, John's Gospel is a little bit different, but when Jesus is baptized, you know, baptism for John was for the forgiveness of sins, and we will remember Jesus had no blemish. He was the Lamb with any without any mark. That Jesus was holy and without sin. So why was Jesus baptized? Well, Jesus was baptized to show others what it meant to be baptized. To show others to submit to it even though he did not need to have it but to show others that they needed to do it as well and so even here where jesus is submitting and will eventually submit through god's will to the cross he is showing us he's showing us of the power of submitting to god's plan now when jesus was baptized we're told the heavens are torn open they're opened up and the spirit descends like a dove and the voice from heaven says this is my son whom i love with him I am well pleased. Here we have the, the voice of heaven saying, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Now the crowd there doesn't know what's going on. This is a, a time, a, kind of a theophany of, of sorts where God's voice is, is spoken and people say, well, it's thunder. Or some folks say, well, it's an angel. And Jesus says, well, it's really that voice is for you. I don't need to hear it because I know it because I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So much of John's gospel is to remind us that there is not really a separation from God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. 